I actually hit my highest amount of muscle. I was doing body weight training for most, I'd say 80, 90% body weight training, purely body weight training for like six months. And I did a DEXA scan. My lean body mass was higher then than just doing like two and a half, two years of straight weights. And there's some cool advantages with body weight training, which I believe, which is one of them is like, you know, if you're doing handstand pushups or dips, your hands are fixed and your body's moving and it's easier to activate muscle when your hands are fixed, right? But when you take a break from weights, and you just, but you still build that strength, that power with a different modality. And then you go do weights. My uh, dude, I, I got incredibly, I got incredibly strong. I think I built up to like a 380 bench and, and dude, my, my lean body mass was freaking was, was super high. If I had to go back, if I had to recreate my best physique, I would probably do three, four months, pure body weight training. And then I would, then I would kind of hit the weights very, very hard. Maybe do a couple body weight moves here and there. Um, but it, it's most people are actually missing out on on a huge potential of, of gains they can make with bodyweight training. That's a great recommendation there because you're essentially substituting the main lifts with weights for calisthenics bodyweight movements. It's not like all that time you invested into the overhead press is in vain. You're doing handstand push-ups instead. It's not like the heavy rows that you were doing were in vain. You're translating that back size and general strength to your your pull-ups as well and it just allows you another round of progress as you said setting new strength prs consistently over time trying to get stronger and how that reflects into your physique and of course there's a the whole thing you said there with the closed kinetic chain body weight movements versus open kinetic chain weighted movements you're just going to start targeting different areas of your rotator cuff which may have been neglected with weight training and then when you transition back you've arguably built some muscle, built some strength in those prime movers, and now you're armed with extra stability in your shoulder to be able to support heavier loads. So I'm really not surprised that you found that cyclical return to weights, body weight, vice versa, was productive for your strength and your physique. And it's funny, when I'm doing heavy, heavy weights, I get hungry after, I wanna eat more. And again, I've gotten very, very lean with just lifting, okay? But it's a bit harder. Um, when you're lifting heavy weights and going for PRs every week and you're in a deficit, it kind of feels like you're, you're swimming against the current. Okay. When you're doing body weight training, you're working on the one arm push up. Okay. You're working on pistol squats. Maybe you're working on that Nordic curl, which is awesome for your posterior chain. Maybe you're working on getting up to handstand pushups. And when the goal is to get stronger with your body weight and you're in a deficit, it just feels like you're swimming with the current. Oh, you know, we're in a little bit of a deficit, but it's not too bad. And so I actually am going to be dedicating like the next, at least the next, you know, couple months, dial the physique in with just body weight training and just focus on getting, going from like 180 to like 174, 175. And, and then I'll probably do a little bit of back and forth. And again, it's like, it's, uh, I think you get the most freedom and power when you use both, you know? 100%. Yeah, because there and you understand like the game that like when we are like popping off in the fitness scene, there are people that were just body weight. Weights are bad, right? And there are people that were that were kind of saying, "Oh, body weight's bullshit. You can't gain muscle body and body weight." And the, the people on kind of both camps. And the real power is when you can utilize both. You can, you can build the best physique. You can utilize both. I think that everyone loves lifting weights these days. Like weight training is a huge thing right now, but still people are kind of sleeping on the power of bodyweight training. One summer, I just stayed so lean for several months with very little effort. And it was the focus on bodyweight training. For some reason, it's easier to, to get stronger with your own body. So if you are in the gym and you've been stuck and you just, you're stuck on bench press, you just can't get to a 225 pound bench press or you can't pass a 225. If you just start working on getting very, very strong with your body weight, boom, you can do push-ups easily. You can do 20 push-ups. Great. Okay. Put your feet on a bench. Okay, get to the 20 push-ups. Okay, you can do that easily. Now do side to side where um, when you go down to the right side, you're using 70% on the right. When you go down the left, 70% on the left. Great. Now do that with your feet up on a bench. Now it's way harder. Okay. Now that's too easy. Now get a basketball or soccer ball and and have your non-working hand on the basketball stretched out away from you. And it's almost like doing a one arm, you're doing like a one arm push-up, but you're losing using a little bit of help with that one arm that's on that's on a basketball. Okay. Do 10 reps like that, then work to then work on doing just a one arm push up. Like your, your body is primed to get very strong when you start using your own body weight. You know, same thing with chin ups. You do chin ups, you do side to side pull ups. You can have a towel over a bar, grab the towel with your non working hand to support you. 
then do chin-ups. Where body weight training gets the bad rep is that the goal is to get stronger. Whenever you're going to the gym, you're trying to build a great physique, you want to get stronger. And so some people with body weight training, they just focus on just doing reps and reps and reps. Let's do 100 pull-ups this workout. Let's do 500 push-ups. Let's do, and that doesn't work very, very well. And it, it's very inefficient. Same thing if you were going to the dumbbell, you're going into the gym and just doing 50 pounds on chest press. Okay, and you, you can do 50 reps, the first 40 are bullshit and the last 10, you know, you're getting something out of it, but it's really not that effective. So with bodyweight training, you want to get strong. You want to build up to, you can do some something really cool with bodyweight training. This is what I, what I, what I do, rec recommend doing is, so you can do two hard sets of a really tough movement and then one set for extra volume. It's kind of like my reverse pyramid training thing. Let's say you can do like five handstand push-ups. Okay, great. Now do like do an extra set of pike push-ups, getting the extra reps in. So you can focus on getting stronger and then doing a, an easier variation to get the get the uh, get the reps in, and it feels freaking awesome. Once you understand the principles of progression for calisthenics, you're in. I feel that the people that talk down on calisthenics don't understand how to make exercise harder and ultimately more effective. So the main ones, as you were saying, Greg, was leverage-based changes to your body posture to increase load on the working side or the working muscles. Additionally to that, why not add weight to calisthenics movements? We've got dips, we've got pull-ups. If you want to add weight to handstand push-ups, you can. With those two changes, going unilateral, changing leverages within that, and also increasing the weight, you can't tell me that you're not going to be challenged for life with, with calisthenics. I think that there'll always be something to challenge you within the five to 30 rep range with those parameters. And what I also like about calisthenics is it incentivizes you to stay lean because everything that we're doing is moving our body through space. And if we start slacking on our training, our nutrition, we don't have the body composition that we want, then it's gonna be harder for us to do these exercises. So it's built in accountability if that is your focus. There's something about that stimulus to fatigue with calisthenics, which is just excellent in its own right. I just feel that when you're doing a workout, even if it is high volume, it just doesn't kill you as much as doing heavy sets of compounds on the weights, which allows you to stress your muscles, stay lean, and repeat that cycle for as long as you want. Yeah, it's, it's that's completely true. You don't feel as just burnt out is the right phrase from bodyweight training. What has your experience been with high reps versus low reps when it comes to muscle gain? I find the six to 10 rep range is really my sweet spot. Okay, have you ever experimented with much higher and what has your experience been with that? I haven't done a ton of that much higher. What kind of rep ranges, rep ranges have you been playing? Like we're talking like 15 to 30 on both compound and isolation. You know what, I should, I'm down to do that, to run that experiment, but I do know that like I would do like 15 to 25 uh, reps on on uh, weighted push-ups, um, and that, that actually did work pretty well. Because some people don't have the best mind-to-muscle connection. I know that's kind of like a like a bodybuilding bro science uh, kind of thing, but there there is something to it. Like the easiest way to really start to get that mind-to-muscle connection is to do higher reps. If you're doing, you know, if if, if trying to get if you're trying to get the right feeling with a heavy weight for five reps can be very very hard. But if you're doing like 20 reps, it's much easier to kind of develop that that proper the proper signal. And so I think most people can actually get that feeling. And actually a pretty, pretty good way to start to build that is as actually to do some higher rep finishers at the end of your workout to really build that mind and muscle connection. For sure. And uh, going off the theme of what we've spoken about today, you don't have to do three sets of this, just do one set, try and get 30 reps. You'd be surprised at the end of a workout, how fatigued you are already. This is going to be a huge stimulus for your body. And I'd argue as well that it'll help build some mental character too. Because if all you're ever used to doing is a certain rep range, you get in your comfort zone there. That's all you know. That's all you know how to push yourself. So I feel that with the right dosage, if the goal is building muscle, this type of high rep finisher is going to do you really well. And again, yeah, you're right. This one good set of this is great. One good set is really all it takes. You know, and it's easier to mentally commit to doing one hard set of 20 to 30 reps. If you got to do that three times, you're going to have to pace yourself. You're going to half-ass it. If you enjoyed today's conversation, click here to watch another Fitness FAQs podcast and learn from the best people in the world. Peace.